Hello my friends! In this tutorial, I'll show you how to paint like Picasso. Let's begin. Today's tutorial, it's based on Picasso's 1932 Girl Before a Mirror painting. In his painting, he was representing one of his mistresses. He had many. This one was Marie Therese Walter. She's portrayed as looking at herself in the mirror in Picasso's now famous cubist style. I'll show you here on the screen the original by Picasso. As you can see, there is much more to the original painting than what is going to be in my painting. Primarily, the reason is due to the difference in the aspect ratio of the video of that of canvases. Also, I want to focus on what I consider the most important part of the composition, which is the faces. So far, I have traced the contour of the girl with black acrylic paint, and now I'm working on the contour of the reflected image in the mirror. Sometimes you will start a painting by filling in the background with color. Other times, as I'm doing now, you want to trace either with a pencil or black paint the contour of your main subjects. The reason for this is you want to define the area where you are going to put the color. If you have the same color for the entire background, then you can lay down first with no issues. However, when you have multiple colors, as is the case in this painting, you need to first define where those colors go. When you do use a background color, keep in mind that that color would influence whatever will go on top of it as an underlayer. Now that my subjects are defined, I'm moving on to the background and I'm going to introduce our first colors into the painting. The background consists of a grid of squares that are at um, roughly 45 degree angle. I don't know, I'm not measuring, just taking a visual guess. I will do the grid in red on the left, green in the middle, and a combination of both on the right side. As I'm working on the green, you will see that I'll jump to portions on the face that have the same color and fill in those sections. Other than just being spontaneous, I guess the reason for doing this would be that I already have the same color on my brush. But basically, I'm just being spontaneous. Which brings me to a point I want to make about Picasso. He's famous for his paintings that are of a style that some might say looks like a child painted them. However, Picasso was a very skilled and accomplished artist when it comes to painting realism. It was in his later years that he returned to his childlike style. I said return because we all start out as children, drawing, coloring, painting. Artists are the kids who never stop. Picasso once said it took me four years to paint like Raphael, but a lifetime to paint like a child. Sometimes I think it's good to allow ourselves to be somewhat of a child when we are creating art. Well. Before I forget, I want to share some news with you. This past week, I was accepted to merch by Amazon. Yeah! Oh, stop that! Well, anyways, I had seen many people say it took months for them to get accepted, so when I applied, I didn't have high expectations. But in less than one week, I got notified that my application was approved. So now you can purchase my artwork on t-shirts. I'll put the link below in the description. Please leave me a comment and tell me which design you like best. 
You will see here that I'm filling in the empty shapes with color. Now regarding how we apply our color, since it's our goal here to paint like Picasso, I need to point out that the paint that I'm using is solid without mixing with other colors. Picasso created a lot of bold contrast using solid color next to each other, yet without mixing them. Another technique to point out here is that Picasso does not use highlights and shadows as is applied in realism to enhance the depth and dimension of the object. Rather, in his cubist style, his images are flat or two-dimensional. What this means is you will see area of his paintings that are one solid color with little or no color effect such as gradients, highlights, shadows or vibrations. To show what I'm talking about, you will notice on the face of the girl, the left side of her face is one solid color light pink. On the right side, to show that she's blushing, there is a bold solid application of red paint. Now, the ladies will know that when you are doing your makeup, you don't leave the blush standing out in one spot. You blend it in order to match the skin color. This is typically what you would also do in a realist style painting. However, Picasso does the very opposite by applying the red spot and then leaving it alone. It's a very simple technique, almost childlike you could say. It is not the complexity of Picasso's cubist style that holds our attention, but rather the meaning the painting conveys. In a realist style painting, what can keep the attention for hours is the study of texture, the lighting, the shadows, the brush stroke, how they work together to trick the eye into believing you are looking at something real. There is no illusion of realism in Picasso's painting. There is only the meaning behind the paint. For example, in this painting, why is the girl blushing? Is she just shy or is there something else behind it? Is she alone? Is there someone in a room with her? See, we could go on and on debating the meaning of such a simple childlike brushstroke. I'm curious what you think. Leave me a comment down below and tell me why do you think she's blushing? You'll notice here that I have outlined a few of the squares with black. It is not clear to me why Picasso used black on just a few of the squares and not all of them. Perhaps the lesson here is sometimes less is more. I have um, several paintings that if I had just stopped earlier, I would have loved the painting, but I kept adding a little more here and a little more there until I totally overdid it and end up not liking the finished product. Now I am at the last stage of the painting, which is applying black in a few empty shapes, as well as redoing the contour I started the painting with. It is important to go over the outline again, to sharpen the color and redefine the shapes. Plus, a bolder black creates much better contrast with the other colors. Bold contrast is important when painting like Picasso. We haven't talked yet about the reflection in the mirror. The thing that is most obvious to me or that stand out the most to me is that the reflection is not the same as the original face. The mirror in this case, it's not mirroring back the reflection it sees, but rather the mirror it's telling a different story altogether. On the surface, 
we notice that in the mirror, only half the face is being shown. The eye is different. It is darker. There is a big red spot on the forehead. The reflected face appears to be either an aged version of the girl or perhaps a version with a darker emotional expression. On a deeper level, I wonder if Picasso is portraying how he believed Marie Therese view herself. Or I wonder, was Picasso trying to show her through his painting something he saw in her that she could not see in herself? Was he trying to get her to look into the mirror of her own soul with this painting? When Picasso created his cubist style, it was so new that not everyone understood it or appreciated it. Some criticized it as childish and non-artistic. As an artist, there is always the temptation to paint for the approval of others. And while this is not wrong on itself, one of the lessons that we can learn from Picasso is that we must also create art for ourselves. There is a time and a place to follow the rules. And then there is a time to throw out the rules and just paint like a child. There you have it, my how to paint like Picasso tutorial. If you are new to my channel, please consider joining the community and hit the subscribe button. Visit my website at mgrgallery.com and don't forget to check out my t-shirts on Amazon. Thanks for watching! Thank you.